Okay, this video will go over Linux file permissions. So the first thing we wanna know about file permissions is how to view them. Uh, we can view them with ls-l uh, to give us a long listing, and the file permissions are this first uh, group of characters that have the permissions for the given file or directory. So I'm gonna say file permissions, but everything in Linux is a file, so a directory is a special type of file. So all everything I'm saying applies to files and directories. You can tell if it's a directory if it starts with a D, if it starts with a dash, it's a file. There are some other different types, but those are the ones we're gonna talk about. So these are the permissions. So how do we interpret them? Well, we also need to know a couple, few other things uh, from the output of this, this field here. Currently the third field is the uh, user who owns the file, and this fourth field is the group associated with the file. Uh, so those are important to know because the permissions are uh, related to, to user, group, and other. So this first set of permissions is for the user, right? The second set of permissions is for the group, and this third set of permissions is for other. Other is any user that is not the owner uh, of, the, of the file and is not the group associated, and is not in the group associated with the file. So these, these letters tell you what uh, permissions each of those groups have on the file, and I've copied them over here to make it a little easier. So like I said, the, the D apply, tells you the type of file, the user's permissions are the first three, the group's permissions are the next three, and the other permissions are the uh, last three. So R gives you read permission, W gives you write permission, and X gives you execute permission. So with read permission, you can read the file, but you can't make any changes to it. With, with write permission, you can change the file. And with execute permission, if the file is a binary file, you'll be able to actually execute or run the file. So um, generally, if you want to edit files, you need read and write because it's hard to write a file that you can't read. Uh, it's hard to edit it if you can't read it. So you'll need read and write if you want to edit files. And uh, over here, the group has read and execute. So you can read the file, but you can't make changes. Same thing for other. So that is how the permissions are interpreted. Uh, in the simplest form. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, later maybe. So when you create a new file, I'm over here in my test user's home directory. I created a directory called files. When you create a file, the um, permissions to get set when you create it uh, are that the owner is the person who created the file, the group is the uh, owner's primary uh, group membership and then it has default files that are derived from the umask but i'm not going to talk about the umask right now um, so basically the owner can change the permissions of a file so uh, i'm i'm the rbe1111 user so i can change permissions and the way you change permissions in linux is with the chmod command change mode uh, command and then you need to specify some comp some combination of things you want to do and this is the symbolic mode for changing permissions where you specify letters and what you want to add or remove. So in this case, I'm going to add write for other. So the way you do that is you tell it which, which set of permissions you want to modify. So in this case, I'm going to put O for other. And I want to add, so I'll put a plus, and I want to add the write permission. Uh, so I'll put a W for write, and then I'm going to add that permission to file 3. So if I look at my resulting permissions, you see that the other set of permissions now have a W. So that's the simplest way to do it uh, in the symbolic mode. You can also combine things together. So if I wanted to give everybody execute, there's two different ways I could do that. I could do user group other plus X, which will give everybody execute for file three. Right, so that explicitly set everything to be execute for file three. Another way you could do that if I wanted to do it for file two I could do chmod plus x. If you don't specify a, a set of uh, user group or other, uh, it'll give it to everyone. So if I could do, do plus x for file 3, that'll give everybody. I meant file 2 because file 3 already had plus x. That'll give everybody. I should have given everybody uh, execute permission, but if we look at the permissions on... Um, this file, I don't have permission to uh, change the, I don't have permissions in the file because this file is owned by root with a group of root. So I can't change that file. That's another good point. Only the owner can change the file permissions or root can change file permissions on anything because root can do everything. So in this case, I can't do it as 
my regular user, but I have this other blue terminal over here that is or the root user. So as a root user, I can do that same command, file two. So that is the basics of how you can add uh, file permissions. See, I have X's. If I, want to, if I want to remove the file permissions, I use a minus to mod minus X. This will take X off of file two. So now the X's are all gone. Um, if I want to uh, add permissions for some some certain things, I can do that as well. So I can do chmod. Uh, I want to give the user in the group read write x for file two, right? And I want to remove. Let's see what I have now. So I have read write x for file two for the user and the group, but I want to remove this read from file two. So I would do shmod uh, other minus read file two. All right, so that is the symbolic way of doing it. Uh, that adds and removes from what's already there. It leaves existing permissions as they are.